Well, hi, today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We're gonna go ahead and uh, combine this YouTube channel with a special class that one of my good friends in Dallas is teaching. Uh, my friend Jason Holt, he lives in Dallas and he's teaching at the Uplift Atlas um, school it's a charter school i believe and um, he has a class and it's related to digital design and um, one of the topics that he's been getting into is photography and by coincidence actually i've been intending to put together a youtube on why you really shouldn't give up on photoshop as a tool if you're in ux and so one of the things that i felt is the most important aspects of using photoshop is for photos um, so you don't have to be a photographer uh, um, to realize that photo uh, photos are something that are kind of a staple in all kinds of different marketing materials and websites. And in fact, one of the things that I was thinking about is photos are actually the one constant element that I find that goes throughout the many generations in digital design. Um, sometimes icons are more popular, sometimes a more simplified style may be more popular. But I feel that the one thing that's been constant is photographs have always been used throughout. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to take this photo that actually uh, high school students took. Um, I kind of went through and tried to pick a photo that I felt was one of the, um, has a, is a candidate for uh, being used for marketing purposes. Um, this person is a speaker, a motivational speaker. Um, she wants to portray herself as someone that's being very confident. Um, and also um, there's something of an element of woman, uh, woman, woman empowerment. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start and um, I have a little screencast that I went ahead and recorded. This is a very informal video, um, but I wanted to go ahead and show you this. So what we have here is I'm in Photoshop and the first thing that I'm gonna wanna do is I'm just gonna name that first uh, um, layer uh, original. I went ahead and double clicked it and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder and that's going to be something where I can put all my edits in. And then the next thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to make a copy of that original and I'm going to rename that layer and let's rename that to, uh, let's see what, what it is. It's going to be uh, renamed to Camera Raw. So I go into Camera Raw under Filters, and you'll go ahead and see. So Camera Raw, um, it looks a lot like Lightroom, and this allows me to go ahead and uh, went ahead and hit Auto, and kind of wanted to see what that would do to the highlights and the shadows. And I took the exposure down a little bit, and I'm going ahead and just doing a little comparison between the original and seeing how that looks right there. Okay. Let's make the exposure a little bit down. Highlights down. Okay. And, um, okay. You definitely see there's a lot more pop. Um, exposure is a little bit more properly exposure. I'm taking the vibrance down. Sometimes when you um, kind of try to bring up more dynamic range, um, the colors get a little overly saturated. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the luminance panel. What you can do is use that little, um, there's, a, there's a color dab over on the top right, and I went ahead and slid that over. Okay. Oops, that's a little mistake. Just kind of spray painted the wall over there. Let's get rid of that. And so one of the things I want to say is one thing that bothers me about this photo is I'd like to see that the, the background is aligned or um, it's either uh, completely aligned or um, completely not lined, like it's a leading line and it's got perspective. So it kind of bothers me that it's almost straight. So I kind of brought out a guide. I dragged it down from the ruler column. Okay. And... What I'm gonna do, go into layer, go into checking out image, sorry about that. And let's go ahead and do a subject select. So Photoshop does a great job of selecting the subject. Okay, let's kind of zoom in. Okay, now down at the bottom of the layers, um, I went ahead and hit Control J and that's for a new layer. 
and that new layer uh, loaded the selection that I had into a new layer. Okay. Okay, so I'm just kind of seeing how that looks. So what this is going to give me the ability to do is have separate control over the subject and over the background. Okay, so I'm going to rename that layer to subject. I'm going to call that one background. Um, okay, got the, I loaded the selection by hitting control and then I tapped on the subject layer to reselect that. And I went over into the selection and I'm going to go ahead and increase that by 10 pixels. And then I'm going to fill it with content aware fill. And so what that's going to do first is it's going to say, what do you want to sample off of? And the green area is showing that's going to sample a little bit off the, off the bark, a little bit off the wall. And so um, I know this might seem strange and you kind of see that it definitely does not look perfect. You kind of see the tree uh, looks like there's kind of a hole cut out of it. That's perfectly fine because the subject's going to cover all that up. And so now I have kind of this separate subject um, with this kind of imperfect background and that's okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and select these bottom bricks. I'm going to try to get those aligned because you kind of see I got those bricks in the middle kind of lined up. You saw that I hit um, control T and then I hit control transform and then he used distort. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that handle down until I get um, those bricks aligned out. Same thing, control T. I'm going to go ahead and hit distort. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag that up and just try to get that into a proper alignment. And so now you kind of see that the bricks are um, a lot more straight. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's, let's try some blur. I'm going to go in the field gallery blur and there's something that's called field blur. And let's go ahead and crank that blur up and just see what it does. Um, so field blur, if we move it up, that's probably way too much to give some kind of separation. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we'll take it to about 32. Okay. Hit the OK button at the top, the center. I think that's kind of an awkward place to put that OK button. Okay. All right. So you kind of see there's a lot more separation. Okay. So it looks like everything looks OK right now. So now what I'm doing right is I put on a masking layer and that masking layer is that little icon on the on the bottom uh, with a little circle in it. And what I'm doing right now is is I am painting black to make just the tree a little bit brighter. Oh, I'm sorry. What I'm doing is, is I'm actually painting, um, painting that masking layer to show the vivid, um, showing the in focus tree. And then the rest of the wall is out of focus. And I actually didn't do a very precise job on that painting. Um, that window on the right was kind of bothering me. So I think the best thing to do is just to crop it out. Okay. And let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and merge those layers. So now we got one for the background. Okay, so in fact, what we did is we straightened out the background. We kind of uh, caused part of it to be more blurry. Uh, we uh, have the tree in, in kind of separate. And then now I'm going to go in camera raw and I'm going to adjust the lighting on the background only right here. Okay, so that 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 little selector on the right it can basically take the color range of what i just selected and i was able to move the saturation down i go ahead and dab again and then i'm going to slide left to right and do i want it to be a little bit more red or a little bit okay so i kind of pitched it to the red okay and so what that's doing is allow me to have control over just the colors of a specific color range okay Okay, and so now you got the subject. 
okay i have some actions i'm going to make these downloadable and i've got something called uh sharpen and i've got frequency separation so what i want to do is i want to use this uh sharpen feature and this is an action you know photoshop does have sharpen but this action does a lot better job of sharpening and so what you're going to see is this sharpening really is going to pop the eyes it's going to bring out the details and here's the thing is i don't want everything sharpened um, what i'd like to do is just sharpen up the eyes sharpen up uh, the necklace uh, the earring a few things give them a little bit of pop um, all sharpening doing is adding in a little bit of micro contrast um, and so you're going to see now what i did is i put that masking layer on i colored everything black so black kind of conceals white reveals so i'm going to go ahead and paint white into that masking layer and go ahead and watch those eyes start to pop and you kind of see that they just look very sharp and vivid that kind of gla uh kind of the glossiness in the eyes really comes out we're going to bring out the shine in that necklace okay add a little bit to the hair okay and let's get a little bit in that ring don't need to be too precise okay just painting in there okay i'm going to go ahead and give a little detail to the watch and let's just kind of do a compare and contrast. It's very small, it's hard to tell the difference. Kind of zoom in and pay attention to the eyes. Kind of, kind of see that pop come into the eyes. And that really is what makes a person feel a lot more living, um, and vibrant. It gives, kind of breathes life into a person uh, for, a, for a portrait. Okay. So I'm gonna rename this layer to subject. Um, after kind of merging it all. Now I've got another action called frequency separation. Um, frequency separation, it's a bit complicated to explain, but what it is, is it basically divides up an image into the tones and the details. And what that's gonna allow me to do is have more precision around making edits to the tonality and smoothing things out, and also being able to specifically do clone stamping and fix kind of blemishes and things like that on a sharpened layer. And it's gonna be a lot more realistic, I would say, um, by doing it this way. Okay, uh, you're going to kind of, okay, you kind of see, uh, you know, I'm un selecting and unselecting those layers, and right now there's the detailed layer and it looks very vivid, and then if I deselect that, it looks blurry. So that bottom layer is the is the tonality in, very, in a very vague form, and then the top layer adds, adds on, um, it kind of layers on the details, okay? So I grab the healing tool. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and use a brush and just use your bracket, um, bracket left and bracket right to make that paintbrush bigger and smaller. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of dab in. Um, I, you know, I'll do blemishes, but I'll also do things that where the light seemed a little bit speckled and I want to kind of get rid of that imperfection. Um, anything that I feel is a visual distraction. Um, keep in mind when, you know, uh, see that little hair coming down um, so I kind of got rid of that hair um, kind of going through finding some blemishes okay um, yeah just little distractions in the texture of the skin kind of going through kind of dabbing through okay um, you know, I just kind of want to even out some of those kind of speckles um, from from the shine, you know, just to take out a little bit of that um, kind of abrupt, hard, um, speckled highlight. Kind of doing the same thing, just kind of dabbing around. Okay. So we just find a few blemishes, just very small ones. Um, she's got very good skin. Um, and going through again just some little tiny highlights just kind of going through um, doesn't take a whole long it doesn't take a long time and you don't have to be super precise yeah um, you know this is helping to kind of you know 
make the teeth a little bit more even uh, going into the lipstick um, just going to kind of even out that that little shimmer okay all right okay so that was working on the high frequency layer that's the details so let's see what that did so you're kind of seeing um, the lighting adjustment gave it some more pop got rid of some of the blemishes it's kind of looking a little bit more cleaner um, you know and I will say you know if an image is for marketing purposes I'm gonna get a little bit more aggressive on um, improving the aesthetics of, of the skin the face clothes um, because I'm not here to be doing documentary ph photography this is really something that's just meant to be pleasing uh, to the eye now I'm gonna go ahead and make a selection uh, go into Gaussian Blur and um, you're gonna go ahead and see I select 12 and what that does is that evens out the tones of those it kind of blends in and it's gonna give it just a nice smoother tonality um, in these kind of areas you kind of notice I'm kind of picking these sort of transition spots right Okay, you see how that kind of that shine got kind of got taken out, and you know um, there's going to be some techniques. If 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 you feel this is too much, you can kind of bring down the opacity of the specific layer. Okay, and go ahead and hit Control F. Um, the the way I'm able to apply that uh, Gaussian uh, blur so fast is I am hitting Control Alt F on a Mac, and uh, there's another shortcut key for the PC. Okay, you kind of see that kind of just made that a little bit more even so kind of go into this neck area see if we can kind of even out some of that tonality okay um you know in the eye in, in the skin you kind of just see that there's just little blotches and what this is going to do is just kind of smoothen out that um that skin texture I wouldn't say skin texture. Um, a lot of like the coloration that's here. Okay, let's go ahead and do the other arm. Again, this is an image for marketing purposes, so I'm getting a little bit more aggressive than I would for maybe say a personal um, photo or doing a friend. Okay, so now going to the high frequency layer and I'm using that um, healing brush and I just feel like that seam is just a little bit um, too pronounced I thought for marketing purposes maybe to tone that down okay so I'm just kind of clone stamping it and it's still there but it's just a lot more subtle I can kind of go through some wrinkles and it actually does kind of uh, bring out little it kind of smoothens little wrinkles out okay all right Oop, made a little mistake over there. Okay, doing a little bit more smoothing out. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead, I'm back on that low frequency layer, and I'm going to go ahead and apply a blur to this whole thing. And this is going to make the whole garment feel like it's just draping more. So this is different than applying blur to just to the straight image. This is applying blur to the, the color tonality. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and blur this, and you're going to watch. This is going to look like it just drapes a lot better. Okay, still has all the details, right? It's okay to you know, select over kind of fine details like stitchings and things like that. So now you kind of see her garment is just looking a lot more well draped. Um, it looks like it was uh, perfectly ironed before she got here. Okay, um, already I'm feeling like this image is looking a lot better. Okay, all right. So now, here's what I'm going to do. I, I'm, I just hit an adjustment layer. And what an adjustment layer does is it's going to apply. So right now I'm lifting up that curve. Kind of see? And that's making everything brighter. Now what I'm going to do, I have a masking layer. or the, Actually, the adjustment layer automatically creates a mask. Go ahead and bring that up. And so you kind of see that I brought up the highlights. Um, well, I should say, I just brightened up the image, the exposure, especially in the mid, uh, mid-tone area. Okay. And now, 
I'll go ahead and colorize all that black. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and paint white to kind of bring in highlights that I'd like. Right now, um, the paintbrush is on a flow of 10% over there, and I think it's not enough, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust that. Um, probably see there's not, not a whole lot of a difference you're seeing right there. Um, it's probably very subtle. Okay. Okay. What I tend to do is um, brighten up the forehead on a female, um, lift up the cheeks on a female. Um, you know, if you want, you can kind of bring in some highlights to the hair. Okay. But overall, this is just really making uh, the light more flattering. It's kind of looks like it's a top down light, which is what the sun does. Um, it's kind of bringing more light into the eyes. This is uh, doing a little teeth whitening right here. I picked up the flow on that white now to 50%. So it's a little bit stronger paint. You know, it's kind of flowing out more, more white paint, if you would. Going to go ahead and just brighten up the eyes in general. Okay. Okay, I think that actually made a big difference right there. See that? Gives a completely different feeling. Um, starting to feel a little bit more editorial. Um, has a little bit more of a professional look to it now. Okay. A lot of times I'm just, you know, selecting and unselecting, just seeing uh, kind of the difference that it makes. Have another curved layer. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down. You kind of see, and as you're going to guess, I'm going to color that masking layer black. Okay, and and I'm going to paint in shadows. Um, you know, shadows are something that bring out more dimension. It's really in the shadows that co coming out of the shadows is what makes something really pop. So I'm, it's kind of counterintuitive, but you're going to kind of see after we get done with these sh shadows, um, the subject's really going to pop off the page. And so by putting a little bit of shadow, it's a little bit flattering. It's going to be a little bit slimming and you can kind of see um, it's causing her to kind of blend into the background on one side. She's got a distinct highlight over on her left hip. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I went back into, um, camera raw. I'm going to apply this vignette. Okay. It's under effects. Kind of see that. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just drawing attention to the subject. So before it looked kind of like a very plain flat photo and just by bringing in more dimensions, more focus, more highlighting and more shadows, um, kind of painting in this tree a little bit darker and it's really trying to make her the focus. Okay. Now I'm actually going in and working on some woodpecker uh, kind of holes. And the reason why I'm working on these is just because anything that's a visual distraction, you know, from, from a marketing perspective, you know, it's good to just, just take those out. Telephone lines, um, these kind of little imperfections in the tree, um, something like a tree. It, I can be very rough with this. I don't need to be too careful. So I'm just using that healing brush and just kind of going through the bark and just getting rid of all that. Um, and I'm doing this on the low frequency layer. And so now you see those holes, those distractions are kind of gone. Um, again, this is given that you're trying to do professional work. Okay. All right. So what do you think? Is the image starting to pop a little bit more? Yeah, so you kind of see the before and the after. All right, so here you see it, right? Um, definitely reshaping the light. Um, and putting a little bit more highlight in there. Putting a little bit more highlight on that one side, kind of making a theme that the sun, the direction of the sun's coming from her, her left. Okay, and 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some shadow over on her neck. And that's another thing. People don't realize the shadows when you're taking photos, they, they have a slimming effect. Um, again, this is a marketing piece. So I'm going to try to aim for making things on the flattering side of things, bringing some shadow on her neck, um, kind of slim, has a slimming effect to it. You know, it's not, um, I'm not warping her neck, just kind of reshaping the light. Kind of adding a little bit more shadow down at the bottom. And um, so hopefully you're getting the idea. Now, I want to make the point, you know, you don't have to edit every photo like this. You have to have a vision. I wanted this thing to have a little bit more pop and do some things to make it, you know, make the background. I realized the background had some issues. It looked a little flat. Um, I want to make this a little bit more dramatic. Um, and you may have a different vision where you want the whole photo to be very bright and airy. A lot of different looks you can kind of go for, but this is just an example of something that I, I chose to do to, um, kind of go for a high contrast, you know, a, a lot of pop, a lot of attention on the subject. You know, this photo is all about her. It's, it's definitely a portrait, uh, for marketing purposes. Okay. Got kind of the square dimension. Um, okay, so I'm just kind of going ahead and inspecting through. See now, just a lot of those blemishes are kind of taken out. I'm going to go ahead and brighten up a little bit more in that eye area. Okay. Kind of see what that shadow did to her neck. Another thing is, is when you're working with these shadows, um, you're going to want to make sure that you're, you're working with the shadows that are already existing. So there you have it. Um, I know this is a long video. It's about 26 minutes. Um, you know, and I think, you know, really this doesn't teach you how to do every single shortcut and how to access all these tools, how to do the masking. Um, I really just wanted to kind of run you through and give you an idea of what kind of things you can do with Photoshop. I apologize. It would take a lot longer for me to go through step by step on how to, how to, you know, get to some of these tools with the shortcut keys. So, um, I'm really glad that you stuck with me on this video. Um, just uh, wish you all the luck in all your endeavors of learning, whether, uh, you know, creativity is something that you pursue in your career or creativity is something that you uh, just, you know, use for fun. Um, I definitely think it's a great outlet. I think it's wonderful that you all are learning um, uh, these kind of, uh, these arts such as photography, graphic tools, digital design. It's certainly needed. I could say that um, design is something that supported my family for uh, you know well over 20 uh, 23 years of my career so anyways I uh, just wanted to wish you the best of luck in all that you do and uh, maybe another time I'll produce another video for Jason uh, Jason in the class okay thanks for sticking with me uh, thanks YouTube for uh, staying with me